Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And in today's video, we'll give you the latest when it comes to Texas Tech men's basketball. As this, well, was a relatively quiet weekend for good reason due to the NCAA, but there was a commitment for the Red Raiders this past weekend. And then we'll look ahead and see what maybe the timeline looks like for the Red Raiders here for about a week to 10 days out when it comes to recruiting and potentially filling a staff. All right. Let's jump into this. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, but let's recap what went on for Texas Tech going into the weekend. And that was getting a commitment from a high schooler, the third high school recruit of the 2023 class for the Red Raiders and finish forward Emeli Yalahu. He happened over the weekend. He helped Finland to the bronze medal in the FIFA under 18 when he averaged 8.4 points, 4.1 rebounds, and 1.7 assists over the course of seven games. Now, I'll be honest, those numbers aren't eye-popping by any stretch of the imagination, but when watching his tape, I thought there was a little bit of things that could translate to the Big 12 with time and development, right? Like, do I think Yalahu's going to come in here and be an instant impact starter for Texas Tech? No, but I do think there are traits that he can build upon to be an impact player for the Red Raiders maybe in a year or two. Right, And some of the things that really stood out to me were his unique skill set and his size. He really does use his feet really, really well, but also he's just a really solid catch-and-shoot guy already at the age of 18. Now, if you want a little bit more in-depth on Yalahu and his skill set and everything I think he's bringing to Red Raider Nation, be sure to go check out the pinned video on the channel, and there's about a nine-minute breakdown of his game and everything that I think he's bringing to the table for Texas Tech. All right, as you may have noticed, it's a little bit dead right now um, when it comes to recruiting and everything like that for Texas Tech men's basketball, and there's a reason for that. It's the dead period, all right? So dead period ends on this Friday, May 26th, and what that means for those that don't know is during the dead period, coaches cannot reach out to recruits. They cannot have any contact. And now it feels like to me, and I don't know if this is the specific reason why, but it feels like because there's a lot of graduations going on, right? And they want people to be able to enjoy those. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter what the reason is. There is a dead period right now, and coaches cannot reach out to players for men's basketball, others schools and everything like that in terms of programs, I should say, at the school can. There's different dead periods for respective programs, different times of the year. This just so happens to be a dead period for Texas Tech men's basketball. Now, when it does start back up, don't be surprised if there is a possible, you know, visit or two on the horizon. And the one guy that I am going to keep bringing up when it comes down to it is Tyron Lawrence, and we'll talk about him in a minute. But I do want to talk about the staffing part of things for Texas Tech. And that's because, reminder, Grant McCaslin himself that they said that they are waiting to land the big one, quote unquote. I don't know what the hell that means. You don't know what the hell that means. But I think if we're to interpret it and everything in terms of the rumors that we've heard around the staff and the one name that just keeps on coming up that everybody's attached to. It's Ben McCollum, right? I think that that's where that would lead to. Does that inevitably happen? I don't know. You don't know either. I think the only people that really know are the ones that are actually down in the nitty gritty, which is Grant McCaslin and, well, Ben McCollum, right? But I do think it would be ideal, and he even said so himself, did Grant McCaslin, to have the staff in place by summer one, which I believe starts June 6th for Texas Tech. Could be wrong on that date, but it is in that region, right? So, I think it's going to be interesting. I think you're going to hear a couple of coaches brought up here pretty soon for the Red Raiders in terms of maybe even this week. Um, I would be very surprised personally if they don't at least add one coach by Memorial Day, right? Just to at least have one more on the staff and make it four. But right now they're playing the slow game, it feels like, and they're trying to make sure that they get the right guys in here um, and going after the quote unquote big one. It's going to be interesting to see where that goes. Um, but I am curious on you guys' thoughts. What is your one word to describe this whole ordeal of Texas Tech men's basketball and the staffing, well, dilemma? I don't know if that's the right word, but the timeline of it. What What is your one word to describe the coaching staff timeline, right? It feels a little weird to me, um, but yeah. 
I mean, again, three coaches, six spots, and you're almost in June. It feels a little weird, but I want to hear you guys' opinion one word again to describe the timeline and the staffing uh, situation, I guess is a good word, for Texas Tech men's basketball. Again, on the recruiting front, I brought up Tyron Lawrence. That's the name right now that is most surrounded by Texas Tech. And again, with good reason. You think of Chokey, the assistant coach, one of them for Texas Tech, he helped coach him up in Kansas in high school. Um, and for those that don't know, Tyron Lawrence is the Vandy transfer, at least at the moment. He is in the portal, but also in the NBA draft process. The thought is right now, in a lot of circles connected to the recruiting world, that if he does indeed withdraw his name from the NBA draft, that it will come down to Vandy or Texas Tech due to that Chokey connection or that AC, whichever name you want to call him, connection to the Texas Tech Red Raiders, right? Again, Coached him up in high school in Kansas. I think Texas Tech has a chance here, um, but there's levels to it, right? I think right now a return to Vandy feels like the most possible situation as it stands right now. But if this drags on a little bit and we don't hear about Tyron Lawrence either withdrawing his name from the NBA draft or hey, he's coming back to school and there isn't a commitment to Vandy and the dead period is over and he can start taking visits, it would not shock me whatsoever if you see Tyron Lawrence take a visit out to the 806 and we've seen what happens for Coach McCaslin and crew when they get guys on campus. 4-4 four, four start right there, 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Uh, though this is not a Wendy's ad, but hey, He's four for four when it comes to commits coming to campus and signing that dotted line is Coach McCaslin and Cruz. So that's one name that I'm looking at. And right now, that would be the one scholarship you have left if you're Texas Tech. I will say this as well. When it comes to the recruiting front, do not be surprised if you see some grad transfers into the mix, whether that's because they're in the NBA draft or guys come back to school and they have the opportunity to not you know, miss any time. And now before you ask that, how are they able to enter the portal and still be eligible for this season, RC? I thought that closed a couple Thursdays ago. It did, but grad transfers can enter at any time and have immediate eligibility, okay? So that's the loophole in all of this. Now, say a sophomore enters the portal, you're not gonna be able to play next year, but a grad transfer can play immediately regardless of the timeline um, in terms of right now as it stands, right? So again, the Texas Tech Red Raiders lineup or roster as of right now, you've got Pop Isaacs, you've got Lindsey Jennings, Walton, Damarion Williams, Lamar Washington, Chance McMillan, Darion Williams, Warren Washington, Emeli Yalahu, Jason Jackson, and Drew Steffi. That leaves you one scholarship remaining. Now, it'll be interesting to see how they go about this in terms of that one scholarship as it stands. And I know some people have asked me about Jason Jackson. My opinion is this. He signed his in. Uh, in L I his national letter of intent, right? I haven't heard anything to say that he is out of that. So until I hear from the man himself, Jason Jackson, that he will not be on the Texas Tech campus next year, I'm going to count him against the scholarship limit. That's just how it's going to be, in my opinion, because Texas Tech can't force him out of that scholarship. They have to respect it, right? So that's kind of why I still have him on the list. I've seen some other people say that he's not on their list. It is what it is. I understand it from their point of view, too, but that's just how my logic is going behind this. Until I hear it from him himself, I'm not going to take him off. That's just my opinion. But again, that's kind of where we stand right now. We're in a dead period waiting. Don't be surprised if you hear a little bit of uh, whispers about coaches starting up in terms of at least one more coach landing on the Texas Tech coaching staff. But as it stands right now on the recruiting front, well, it's dead because it's a dead period. I'm R.C. Maxfield reminding you, if you want the latest breaking news and rumors when it comes to Texas Tech men's basketball all year long, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button to stay in the know right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.